So far, we have seen uh, two different paradigms. One was session-based, where you had a sequence of IDs of items and you wanted to predict the next one and recommend it to the user. The other one that we saw was your data was in the form of a matrix, and then that was the interaction matrix between users and items. This user gave a five star to this particular product. Here is a third approach of thinking about recommender, recommender systems, but this is mostly engineering. You're gonna see very little math here, but it's actually a good exercise to learn about these engineering practices as well. Google Play is similar to uh, the Apple Store, where you are gonna buy apps and install apps. This is for Android devices. And it's a large scale problem. You have a lot of users. At that time, it was 1 billion active users, 2016. And then you had 1 million apps, applications that the users can install. Impressions is a list of apps. You can think of it as if you're recommending a list of apps for the user to install. This is a third approach to think about recommender systems. You can view it as a search ranking system. You can think of it as if you are searching for something on Google. You type a query. In this case, the query is gonna be who is the user and you have some contextual information. And this is gonna be clear when I explain it more. And then the output is gonna be a list of items that you return. So it's very similar to how you would search for something on Google. You type something, you click enter, and then a list of uh, search results is gonna show in front of you. So you have a query, it's gonna go ahead and retrieve from the items database, perhaps around 100 of them. You rank them, and then perhaps you show top 10 of them to your user, top 10 items. So query retrieval from the data set, rank, and then return. And you can think of this as the first page of the results in your search. And if the user wants to see the next 10, they can click on the button and then that's gonna show them the next 10 items. But as the user is interacting with your system, you're gonna be collecting data. This user, we recommended them these items and then they actually clicked on perhaps the third, the fourth item that we recommended to them or they click on none of them. You record that data, and then you keep updating your model. So what are the user features? What is your input query? It's gonna be your user features and some contextual features. For user features, you can say, uh, in which country is the user accessing your website or is accessing Google Play? What language are they using? What is their demographic information? What is the device that they are using? This is the contextual information. What time of the day is that? What day of the week is that? And then in terms of your impression features, impression is the list of apps. What is the app age? Do you have historical statistics on your app? How many people downloaded it and installed it? These are your features. You're doing a lot of feature engineering here. And this is usually the case. With recommender systems, you, know to, you need to know your domain. And that is what makes it complex. And what is your label that you're gonna keep a log of it? If an app was installed by the user, the corresponding label is one, otherwise you label it as a zero. And that's your training data. In terms of the model, you look at your features and your features are perhaps D-dimensional. And these are all of the features. What was the country? Some of your features are gonna be continuous variables. Some of them perhaps like age are continuous, some of them are discrete. Like what language are they using? Or are they a female, male, etc.? And so this is your feature vector. In wide and deep model, you do feature engineering in addition to some more feature engineering, which is gonna take into account the interactions between these variables or the coordinates of these variables. At the same time, you're doing feature learning. This is where the deep model is gonna come in, and this is where feature engineering is gonna come in. What is this fee function? It's a combination of your uh, original feature vectors. And whenever it's a zero, 
that feature doesn't contribute, otherwise it is present. And this is gonna become more clear very soon, what you're actually doing here. Okay? So don't worry about this line, I have to explain it more. The one that is deep is uh, easy to explain. That's what we have been doing so far. Okay? In terms of data generation, this step that you're training your model, you have your user data, you have your app impression data, you create your data uh, training data, you generate them. Once you generate your data, you're gonna adjust your vocabulary size. And what do I mean by vocabulary? Perhaps you have a new user with a new language, then you need to increase the size of your vocabulary by one, because now you have an additional language. Or it could happen that you have an additional item, or it could happen that you have an additional user if you're keeping your some user ID information. If your users are logged in, and perhaps they open a new account. You train your model, you have your previous models, you fine tune them a little bit, you verify that everything is correct before putting things in production and serving your customers. Let's go back to this formula here. What do I mean? Let's start with uh, categorical variables. Perhaps you have a variable about gender, you have another variable about language. Let's say for gender, you have two options, and so you are not inclusive enough. You have two options here, and perhaps for language, you have three options out of those two. So gender was two-dimensional, language was three-dimensional. Your observations are actually gonna be one hot vectors. Somebody has a one here and a zero here in front of female is a one and zero otherwise. And you have your language. English is gonna be one, zero, zero. French is gonna be zero, one, zero, et cetera. You're gonna create a new variable called gender language, and it's gonna have a higher dimension. It's gonna be two times three, it's gonna be six dimensional. And if a particular observation is a female and they're using English, you're gonna have one, zero, 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 five zeros. If it's a female and they're using perhaps French, it's gonna be, zero one zero 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 four zeros in front of the one etc you get the idea this is how you're constructing this feature so these are additional variables or additional dimensions that's why you're kind of in it okay if some uh, features are continuous you take that real valued feature you push it through it's basically this is its histogram you take it and push it through cumulative histogram or cumulative distribution. And then you divide it based on the quantiles. And then you're gonna normalize the values. So in the end of the day, you're quantizing this feature using its own histogram. And as soon as you quantize, then you can represent it as a categorical variable. And then you're back into this story of a similar story like language. And then you can do your feature engineering. For feature learning, you have some continuous features you have some categorical features, you embed them, you concatenate the embeddings, push them through nonlinearities and linear uh, multiplications, and then concatenate with the result of these cross product transformations, these transformations that you are doing here. So it's gonna be a concatenation of X phi multiplied by a weight, and then whatever that's coming out of this layer, you're calling it AL, multiply by matrix, add a bias, on top of that put your logistic function and the right under the bus function. And it's a zero one. Was the app installed or was it not installed? And what is the probability of that app getting installed by this particular user? And this is basically explaining the same thing. You have your cross product transformations and the sparse features. This is feature engineering. This is the wide component. And this is the deep component of wide and deep learning framework. And uh, at the same time, you want to make sure that your model is actually not memorizing, it is actually generalizing new test data. And for that, you can compare. You have these A-B testing before putting anything in production. You're going to do A-B testing. You're going to compare things to a baseline. The wide without any deep learning is your control. This is the thing that you're going to be comparing to. Then you're going to compare deep, and then you're going to compare wide and deep, and uh, wide and deep is doing better. 
and I'm going to tell you what is AUC in the next paper. And then this is how much gain you're going to get out of it. Was this clear? Okay, perfect.